Hello there YouTube. This is today's project. We're going to take my little grinder, which I do have a video on. Any grinder. We're going to mount it on this box. Okay. We'll be mounted on top of the box. Right. And this says 130 watts, 1.3 amps. So we have a light dimmer thing that we've made here, common light dimmer. I would recommend maybe the one for a ceiling fan, but 130 watts, I don't know right now of how much wattage that dimmer will hold, but I'm sure it will handle 130 watts. We're going to take the rivets out of here, work on this, and we'll put bolts back in it. We will have the dimmer in here, probably on this end. So we can speed it up, slow it down. We will have a slot cut in here for whatever size wheel we have. Also, we will take some kind of shield under here to keep all the filings from going down inside of here. We probably will also build something to protect the dimmer. We will have a three-wired ground cord on it. This box will be grounded. The motor will be grounded to the outlet. Do not bypass your electrical codes. This is only a two-wire motor, but just in case for safety, we will have a ground. This will be grounded to here. This will be grounded to the outlet. We'll have a three-wire ground cord going up to, see it, our three grounded outlet strip. Okay, don't bypass electrical codes. You never know. Something sorts out, you're working here. Then we have an idea of... This is a very small protractor. Something for angles. This is an El Cheapo, whatever, angle finder. We may cut like this part off here. And where this hole is in here with this bolt, it may just be riveted. Riveted. That word, rivet. You rivet something and you were done rivet, riveting. I just love them words that do that. Riveted. Here, we'll just call it riveted, past tense of rivet. If it ain't fun, I don't want to do it. Some kind of angle finder in here. We do have a small protractor somewhere that's made out of plastic. But if we could have something on top of here that does not interfere with when you use the blade, maybe it has to go in this bar. So the rivet will be out of your way. That way when we grind something like a drill bit or in the future a tool bit for a lathe or something, we will have something to go by gesso meter for the angle. We may just put marks on here. We may put something on here that just has marks on it in the future. Uh, like I said, we'll have something underneath when we cut this slot out so the filings can't fall down into it. And that about covers that. We'll just get after it. We'll show you the progress as we build this thing. I don't want to make this a whole long video series, but I do have a video on how I made this arbor on here with two kinds of epoxy. The kind in the tube, the kind you need together. The kind in the tube is rubbery, and when I used this in the summer it would flex, so we put this kneaded kind that you need to get like clay on here, and we got rid of all that problem. So we have little adapters made. I showed where I made plastic washers in a video with holes in them. Uh, this takes a diamond wheel. I have two diamond stones for this for drill bits and stuff. Even though we can't sharpen a drill, bur drill bit with a hoot, we'll learn someday. So this would be nice. We'll be able to store all this stuff in here. I get this stuff in cans everywhere. Well, if we could part with the store all of our junk down here, we just lift the lid up. But this will have the rivets taken out to work on the lid. So we'll get to work. We'll show you as the progress goes. Okay, hopefully the focus will work on here on Telemacro. And to wash that up, we will find some shorter screws, hopefully. I don't know what size them are. Okay, we measured back here. We have a center line on the box. Okay, this one this one's wore down, but I made this so I can put those three inch cutter discs. It's the same ones you find on your air air tools and I have a little plastic bushing I put in here that'll show up <clears throat> excuse me 
Okay, what we did is we came an inch and a half out from the center. We just used our cheap measuring tool to scrape on the metal. We will drill a hole out here, which will maybe under a quarter of an inch. Then we will cut a slot in here with our Dremel, and then we'll widen it. Just the width of the blade, okay? So we'll cut with our Dremel, and we'll widen it just the width of the blade. We want this little machine to be as pre precise as it can be. Because if it ever did wear, it's just going to cut out the slot more in the metal the first time we fire it up. Because these aren't warped, but they're warped, you shouldn't use it. But this one is wore down. If you measure this one, it is probably only two and three quarters. I know they make these, I'm sure they're three inches, so we're not going to take your chances. We're going to go three inches. I'm sure that's what size these are. You're not supposed to grind on the side of these, but for small bits and doing things, I've done quite a bit of sanding. As you can see on this side, what happens is you start wearing into this woven material, fiberglass, and then they'll shatter. They're meant to cut on the edge. But this will also work nice to cut something on the edge because you can see, if you can see how that is, let's get the camera up here. It will stick down in the box a ways. So that's what we're looking for. It's going to be kind of like a mini, mini little saw. When you have a new blade, you'll be able to slide something in here. We're not going to go extravagant and make no fixtures or nothing like that. It'll be more for a free-handed. But this is kind of flimsy, as you can see. We may, once this is done, put something underneath here to make this stronger. Even if it was a piece of quarter-inch plywood. If it is stuck under here, it will keep the flex out. That's all we're worried about. So it doesn't have to be metal. We can use some plywood or something. Under here, where the blade sticks through, we'll have something like, I'm thinking of part of a can. Let's say this is part of a can. With the ends covered, with the end on it. Some kind of cover riveted. So... We won't show how that's made. We'll show it when it's done, though. It'll be some kind of shield to keep all the dust. We are also going to cover up the outlet, the dimmer, dimmer switch, of course. That's all that. That will be covered with something non-flammable, some kind of metal, plastic, even if it's plastic, not flammable like paper, cardboard, or anything. But it may be part of one of these plastic boxes. I may chop this one down. This was so I could dim two lights at one time at the desk. Well, we never got around to that after we made it, so we're going to, if we want another one, we'll buy another dimmer switch. They're cheap. They're only about five bucks. You can buy a cheap common dimmer for five dollars. Enough rambling. Next shot you'll see is with all this cut out. Uh, whatever guard I put on here, underneath. And then we'll be on to doing the electrical parts and putting the switch in, so... I like to show a little detail and discuss it. So you can see. I know it's hard to show up on camera. This is a light green colored box. But on to the build. Okay, we may have to make the slot a little light, a little bit wider. I have all that stuff on there for now because I can't find my plastic wire. So I had to use another. Ooh, don't do that. I'll wear them down my carbide. That's why that's all rigged up like that. It'll have plastic horses. I can shim either way. I can either shim the blade out or in. This is the light dimmer. I said this is what? This is 130 watts. I'm sure this dimmer will handle 130 watts. People put them on uh, light fixtures and they'll have 400 watt bulbs in them. You know they do. Probably never run that fast. We'll probably run about what about that speed. It is a little shaky. But that's using a dimmer over there. You can hear it drag a little bit. We have to take a little more out. But it will wear. Not too particular about that. It will wear itself in there. You put a new blade or whatever, it'll wear, it'll but I want enough clearance to start with. 
And, like I said, if we could have something on here like this, the shore angle. So we come up here to grind something have our angle. So it may just be Sharpie marker lines put on there because you want a flat surface to work on. This was the whole idea. When there's a fresh blade in there, you can get up here, right here if you want to. Or I can pull a little block down here. I may have an aluminum block or something on here eventually. So I can get up more onto the blade as the blade gets a smaller diameter. Because this whole idea was to cut anything if I wanted to cut plexiglass or something. Small aluminum. Uh, like this stuff. Real thin aluminum. I'll be able to slide in there and make like a little saw. All that stuff's dangerous. Work gloves are going to do that. This will conclude part one. Part two will be wiring up the electrical box in there. All the other little doodads will have to do. But this was the main thing to get done first. Said I took the rivets out of the lid. There'll be bolts. Just to make this easier to work on. But it is kind of wobbly. I said I may go ahead and bolt. Uh, as well as we may put a piece of cord and plywood or something underneath here, at least on this side. We have some kind of cover over this so the dust doesn't go down into the box where the dimmer switch will be. So, thanks for watching this part. On to part two.